You know, I kind of love how I had an insanely long intro in my first part of Fire Emblem Fates, saying that I'm not gonna like spam the DLC items or use anything that's way too OP, and then I wind up creating a custom script that auto syncs with Azura for me to get her to level 40 for free. So for anybody who saw part 4 of my Fire Emblem Fate series, which covered this chapter here, chapter 5 of our Lunatic Classic playthrough, you may recall that after we wiped all the map except for the boss here at the end, I was trying to get an auto hotkey script working to see if I could throw something together that would just auto sing with Azura for me to get her to level 40. Because you can just spam sing like this, but as you go on and on, it will get to the point where you only gain 1 EXP per sing. Like, it is possible to get all the way to level 40 with this it's just a very slow monotonous process that no sane person would want to be there at their keyboard or 3ds or whatever just spamming this over and over again so my mindset was what if i programmed an auto hotkey script which i hadn't programmed in for like over a year at the time and got something that auto sang with azura for me something that i could leave going in the background to just do it for me because the thing about potentially getting Azura to level 40 here is this is still before the route split. And if you use your save file at the branch of fate to start each route right where the route split, then you start each route with whatever progress you had at the route split. Meaning if your Azura is level 40 before the route split, then anytime you pick up a new file and start a new save from the route split, you'll, be, you'll already have a file that has a level 40 Azura, and that's going to be like, 40-ish levels that you'll never have to put in again to get her up there, you know? So if in theory you do three different save files from the Branch of Fate, then getting Azura to level 40 here saves you the effort of doing it in three different save files, so it's essentially like three times the efficiency of like normal grinding like this, I guess, so it's very, very nice to only have to do it once and then never have to do it again because you can just pick it up from the Branch of Fate and not have to worry about things again. For anybody who doesn't know, AutoHotkey is essentially a very simple software that essentially lets you to program in hotkeys. Like, tell it, if you hit this one button, do all these things. So in this case, I have it set so that when I hit the numpad div, so the dividing sign on my number key, then it loops this script right here, which is just sending all these, all these inputs and such, which is just set up to my hotkeys or my control config on Citra here, essentially. So, for example, in my control scheme, I use WASD for the circle pad, I use TFGH for the D-pad, and then I use up, down, left, right on the arrow keys for my A, B, X, and Y. So, you'll see a lot of right, down, right, up here, which is essentially pressing the A button. And T down is press up on the D-pad, F down, F up is just press left on the D-pad, since that's, you know, my left button and such. M is my start button, which I have been pressed from time to time to try to, like, skip some things when possible. I don't even know if it's in time to skip things properly, but it's fine, it's there, it works, I suppose. I encountered a lot of issues of trying to get this working, both uh, during my playthrough of this game and, you know, off camera of trying to get it set up here. The biggest problem I encountered during the playthrough was I couldn't actually figure out how to get these inputs sent directly to Citra itself. All these hotkeys would be being pressed, but it wouldn't be like within Citra. And I managed to fix that with this line of code here, if window active of hk.exe and citra-qt.exe, which is like the proper name for it in Task Manager, then if numpad div is hit, then loop this code here and just keep on doing it essentially. You know, it's also really funny because I spent the better part of an hour trying to get this working in the middle of the playthrough episode, and then once I start labbing it off camera, I actually figured it out in not that much time at all. Another problem that I did encounter when I was off camera is I initially had these send commands as send right down, right up in the same line, and then sleep. So essentially what this is telling the program to do is press down the right key and then like lift the finger up so that you're not, you know, just holding down the key infinitely essentially. And I used to have these like in the same thing, like right down and right up so it's just like that, a press. And for some reason it would like mess up the timing and everything would fall apart and it would start going into like random menus and stuff like that when things weren't timed up the right way that they wanted to that they were supposed to be so i changed the script so that it presses that anytime it presses any button down it sleeps for 100 milliseconds and then it lifts the finger up and then it waits like typically about 200 milliseconds before doing the next thing it depends from thing to thing 
like some things that have it take much longer for like for example this start press is while azura is gaining experience for example this 1600 milliseconds which is that moment right there that you just saw or for example at the end when it's transitioning to enemy phase and then to player phase it takes you know 2.5 seconds here as you oh i didn't oh i'm not scrolling down enough to show that oh just take my word for it because this layout isn't accommodating for that just take my word that where you see m down at the bottom here there's a freaking sleep for two and a half seconds there just take my word for it one of the key issues that i did have with writing the script that makes it still not perfect and still a little bit iffy even in its current state is the fact that the case that this is set up for the set of inputs that it does is specifically for this situation happening over and over again that's only a situation it accounts for just doing this over and over and over again because you see there's a different set of inputs that you need to do to advance when azura actually gets a level up you need to wait extra long for like the level up to go through and it to show all the stats that increase and then you need an extra a press to actually advance the text of her saying like oh i leveled up and as far as i'm aware there's no good way to factor in an extra a press into this set of inputs without it completely screwing up the system that's here because an extra a press here as you can see would go into the menu and if she's not getting a level up and a is pressing extra time it would probably just go into the unit screen and then it would just like repeat these inputs over and over again on a screen where it's not supposed to be doing that so it is definitely a bit of a flawed script considering you do have to essentially turn off the script right before Azura is about to level up get the level up go to the next turn and then start the script up again for no other reason than you need a different set of inputs for leveling up than for just this over and over so you know that's a bit irksome and annoying you know maybe there's some combination or set of inputs that you could do that would you know work for level ups and this screen here it would probably be something that you know takes much longer to level up than this considering you'd have to like wait a whole bunch of extra time just on the off chance that you get the level up because of how long you have to wait for the actual level up to go through but when it comes to putting something like that together with both the extra waiting time and you know an extra input that might completely screw things over with this current system that's something that i'm probably not smart enough to figure out myself i think this is about as far as i can do i'm i'm a freaking computer science major who sucks at programming but what you gonna do <laughs> something else that is worth mentioning about this script is it's also currently set up with a default emulation speed something that's very very nice that i mean very nice about citra is that you can actually increase the emulation speed which can help with grinding for things like this so it is possible that i could adjust these sleep timers like these timers are things that i basically fine-tuned to the current system as you can see it's you know advancing through things like pretty fast here it's not you know frame perfect or anything like that but you know it's pretty close and doing things here pretty efficiently and all these timers are set up for the default emulation speed if i want to make this even more efficient i could potentially try throwing citra into double speed and then maybe would i just be able to have the timers here and have it work out i don't know it'll potentially take some experimenting and I mean, if this is something that you wind up trying yourself, then it might also depend from computer to computer if it's something that, you know, your computer and Citra can handle. Double emulation speed, even triple emulation speed. It really depends from computer to computer. So this is like the for sure thing that works as long as Citra is running at 100% emulation speed. I should also mention one more downside of this program is even though there's this line of if when active, yada yada, and directs these inputs to Citra, it seems to only do so if Citra is like the current thing that you're clicked on. Like if you click onto any other program, like if I clicked on this script right here, all of a sudden it would start doing these inputs here. Look, it's typing and freaking destroying my freaking script here. So, uh, you know, you can clearly see it change. Oh crap, I stop the script. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, let, let's just fix that real quick. This should be, this should be sleep 100 and this should just be send like yeah let's save my script again and then get it running and then go ahead and advance to the next turn here and then hit the button to get my script running again there we go um so you can't be clicked onto something else while it's running that is another downside because if you click onto anything else it's going to be running these inputs on whatever else you clicked on essentially so this script would be the kind of thing that might be like best to be run if you have like two computers and you can just kind of absent-mindedly let it run on one computer on the side while you do work or like watch youtube or something on the other computer on the side or if you you know do that on like a tablet or a phone or something i don't know 
So yeah, two big downsides to this script. One is you have to be clicked on Citra, so while it's running, you can't really do anything else with the computer that's running it. And two is you need to like manually be there to fix things when an actual level up happens. But apart from those two key issues, it's like, it works, which is great. And I may just potentially wind up using this exact script that I threw together to, you know, get Azura's level up there. We're about to be getting a level up here, so you can see firsthand how it breaks it. Because, again, this code doesn't factor in, you know, the change in what's going to happen on a level up screen. So now it just starts doing the same inputs over and over again at the same pace that it was doing. And I'm going to use the HP tonic, I think. No, freaking X. Dang it, there goes the HP tonic. Uh, <laughs> but... Yeah, essentially that's what happens on- I close the script for now, but that's essentially what happens on- on a level up screen, where it just keeps on doing these same inputs over and over again that don't factor in for the level up screen, so it's gonna break things, essentially. So, it is something that you do need to, like, pay attention to, be looking at from time to time, and seeing, like, oh, did it by chance break? Okay, well, I guess I need to adjust it, freaking reset the cycle, and reset my script, and have it be good for another level up. You know, now that I think about it, for that very reason, I think I'm gonna freaking give the HP tonic to someone else while this is going on. Probably not a bad idea, you know? Might not be the worst idea to just take that, like, out of sight, out of mind, and then freaking, yeah, Kaze, freaking, you can hold on to it for safekeeping. Let me run this script again, and then, uh, there. There. And so the cycle continues. So yeah, my thing that I threw together here, it's definitely far from perfect, but you know what it's so much better than potentially doing this manually if you want a level 40 Azura before the time skip. And I should also mention, this script can easily be adjusted for like whatever control scheme on Citra you may be running. Like essentially just change these inputs to what the equivalent button is for you. Like for me, right is the A button. T is up on the D-pad, uh, F is left on the D-pad, and M is the start button. Which, again, I don't know if it's doing anything, I just have it be spammed a couple times to see if it skips some of these things. Um, and I guess that's all the buttons that you even really need to know, that you need to adjust to whatever it is on your equivalent, like, control scheme. But yeah, if it's something that you want to run yourself, you can easily just, you know, download an auto hotkey and use this script here. Just make a freaking new TXT file with notepad, except change the extension to .ahk instead of .txt, and then you can just edit it with notepad. And then you can just, like, copy-paste this code in and just adjust it to your equivalent inputs. I'll have this code in the description if you want it. If you want to actually download my script here directly, then feel free to stop by the Discord, which will be in the description below, and feel free to ask me. I'm always down to, like, share stuff that I'm working on whenever it comes to Fire Emblem-related stuff. So yeah, just figured I'd post this update video after part 4 of my Fire Emblem Fates playthrough of trying to get this working and failing, and now it's technically working for an update on that, as well as anybody else who might want to get this working. You know, now that I think about it, this should, in theory, be possible to do with Fire Emblem Awakening as well with Olivia, right? Like, it should, in theory, just be the exact same set of inputs to get it working. Oh, speaking of exact same set of inputs, again, something that I should mention is this is designed precisely to work with this exact scheme here. So, Azura has to be on the left of the person who's being dance to and it's pretty much gonna have to be your unit because i should specify that within settings i have it be so that on each turn on each new player phase the cursor automatically jumps to your to your unit and i also have assist animations off so in fire emblem awakening i guess the equivalent thing would be having the cursor jump to Chrom. but if you really want azura to sing to someone else then you would just have to put in in the input list somewhere down here like press to the right at the beginning of player phase actually yeah probably right at the top here or right at the end here you would just have to put in another like right input which in my case would be h for right on the d-pad to just move the cursor over one so yeah there's that i really wish i could have gotten something working that you know, would factor in for the level ups as well without me having to, you know, manually refresh it each time a level up happens. And I wish that's something that wouldn't have to have, like, Citra be the thing that's clicked on, but, you know, I'm still proud of what I threw together here. It's something that functions, it's something that, you know, works cleanly most of the time, and, you know, I'll, I'll definitely be using this plenty. So, it is possible that during the next part of our Fire Emblem Fates playthrough, I may well have a level 40 Azura if I wind up using this script that I threw together. 
Again, I find it so funny how I prefaced my Fire Emblem Fates playthrough saying I'm not gonna spam too many of the DLC things. Here's the restrictions on it so I don't just become horrendously OP. And then I wind up creating a custom script to freaking get Azura to level 40 for me. But yeah, if you want to talk about this or anything else really Fire Emblem related, feel free to stop by the Discord in the description below. Anyway, with that, I'm gonna head out. I'm probably gonna go like watch some YouTube while this runs in the background. I'm just mesmerized. <laughs> Let us depart. <laughs> Let's get away from all this red. Oh my goodness, how did it get worse? What is this? My eyes! Ah! I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I'm sorry.